on December 9, 1957, an incredible event occurred within the UK. Now known as the Silpho Saucer Incident, it has become known within UFO enthusiast circles as the UK's Roswell. It was a story that was first released within the Yorkshire Post. It told of a mystery disc that was found on the Yorkshire Moors. Scarborough businessman Frank Dickinson, along with two friends, were driving through a place known as Reesty Hill, near the village of Silpho, when their car mysteriously stalled as a glowing object appeared in the sky above them, subsequently landing in the Borax Forest. Mr. Dickinson and his friends bravely pursued the downed craft and found a mysterious metallic saucer in a patch of freshly cindered bracken. Amazingly, when the artifact was cut open, apparently a tiny book was found within made of 17 thin copper sheets covered in 2,000 unknown hieroglyphs. Interestingly, similar hieroglyphics were also supposedly found among the wreckage of the UFO that allegedly crashed at Roswell, New Mexico in June 1947. The remains of the Silpho Moore object were subsequently sent to a London laboratory for examination in 1963, including a perplexing fused section of the metal and plastic which was apparently from the outer casing. Gordon Claringbull, a funded academic from the Natural History Museum who specialized in meteorites and explosives, said in a memo to the Science Museum that he was prepared to wager anything that the pieces of metal were made on Earth. However, although the scientific community was predictably skeptical, Air Chief Marshal Lord Dowding, who led the RAF during the Battle of Britain during World War II, examined the Silpho saucer in 1958. He actually believed it was genuine. Describing it as a quote, miniature computer piloted flying saucer, Lord Dowding was openly convinced it was a genuine artifact from space, according to the report in the Yorkshire Post. The results of the analysis found that the artifacts contained an unusually pure set of metals, cast in highly specific ways, fueling the UFO community's interest in the object's fragments. Will more modern specific analysis shed more light on this enigmatic object's origins? We will keep you posted on any future developments. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. In the first wing of the Egyptian Museum in Cairo, close to the Room of the Mummies, one cannot help but be surprised by what you will discover. In a small, inconspicuous display cabinet, an object like no other can be found. Made from a brittle stone known as schist, it is similar in shape to a wheel or discus. This mysterious and to this day unexplained item has become known among particular circles as the tri-lobed disc. It has perplexed all those who have examined it, especially the select Egyptologists that have had the opportunity to study it at great length. Its discoverer is known as one of the most important Egyptologists of the 20th century, author of a classic volume on Egyptology, Archaic Egypt, that continues to be an important bibliographic reference of study even to this day. While carrying out excavations in 1936 within the archaeological zone of Saqqara, Emery discovered the tomb of Prince Sabu. Among several utensils of varying function, the trilobe disc would be found. Emery's attention was immediately drawn to the object, initially defining it in his reports on the First Dynasty tombs as, quote, a container in the form of schist bowl. Years later, he again commented on the subject with a word that perfectly summarized the reality of the situation, indicating to the discomfort the object was causing, describing it as a kachibachi, a small hole that threatens to become bigger and bigger. It seems Emery, like many others within the same field, retained their success and notoriety by deliberately and publicly denying such artifacts any traction within the public domain. Denying us all a true understanding of Egyptian history, or at least a questioning of the currently upheld teachings. He finished his quotation by stating that, A satisfactory explanation has not yet been obtained on the particular design of this object, or indeed its construction. The accepted and predictably rigid view regarding the introduction of the wheel into ancient Egypt coincided with the invasion of the Hyksos at the end of the Medium Empire in 1640 BC. 
this date being over a thousand years after the disk's construction. Egyptologist Cyril Alred reached the conclusion that the object was, without a doubt, a copy of a previously much older metallic object. A detail next to the orifice in the center also made him suspect that this object was only a small part of a more complex mechanism and that it was saved thanks to a stone reproduction for unknown reasons made by an artist with unknown tools. And the fact that it demonstrates such a complex design at such a primitive time in ancient Egyptian history suggests its origins may have been far more unusual than modern tenants would have you believe. It is highly possible that this artifact is a fragment of one's highly advanced technologies, which have subsequently been lost over the millennia. Regardless of hypothesis, its true function, history, or indeed construction, its reason for existence remains a mystery to this day. Just what could the Smithsonian be hiding? Established in 1846, it's a tightly knit network of museums and research centers exclusively and uniquely funded by the United States government. Nicknamed the Nation's Attic, and for good reason. Made up of 19 museums, 9 research centers, and even a zoo, it's the official resting place for over 154 million historically valuable items. With an annual budget of around 1.2 billion public dollars, two-thirds of which coming from annual federal appropriations, it's safe to say that if the Institute needed to hide something, it would undoubtedly have the financial clout to do so. Through the years, the meddling in which the Institute has been reportedly involved in can be seen as not only overwhelming, but condemning of a hidden agenda. During our extensive research into alternative and controversial historical discoveries, we've often been confronted with such statements as the Smithsonian people will be highly pleased to get their hands on this. Though, unfortunately, these sorts of condemning phrases have all but disappeared from mainstream media as the years have passed, they still do indeed exist within newspaper archives stored within the libraries of Earth, and thankfully there are many of them. As time has passed, reports of this involvement have become more and more elusive. This could be seen as a direct correlation with advancements within modern communications, the birth of the Internet, along with many other forms of learning, subsequently aiding in the distribution of said information, growing awareness of these reports exponentially. As a result, more in-depth and heightened understandings of evolution theory and the protection thereof becomes more developed and entwined with such institutions. Profiteers from these lies become guardians of secrets which could destroy their status, clearly lending to the possibility and motive for a cover-up. Although reports which hit the internet in 2014 claimed a Freedom of Information Act had revealed that the Smithsonian had covered up the remains of thousands of giants was eventually debunked. The flurry of attention it has created surrounding the topic, an allegation which we personally know to be accurate, has aided tremendously in the search for the truth surrounding these accusations. A source we highly recommend is a book by Richard J. Dewhurst, titled The Ancient Giants Who Ruled America, The Missing Skeletons, and The Great Smithsonian Cover-Up. It can not only be seen as a go-to resource for evidence of a race of ancient giants, but it also details the thousands of giant skeletons that have been found, particularly within the Mississippi Valley, as well as within the ruins of the giant cities over the past few centuries. It catalogues 400 years of excavations, newspaper articles, first-person accounts, state historical records, and illustrated field report, including more than 100 rare corroborative photographs. It reveals that not only was North America once ruled by an advanced race of giants, but also that the Smithsonian has been actively suppressing this physical evidence for nearly 150 years. Dewhurst shows how this suppression began shortly after the Civil War and transformed into an outright cover-up, this being due to Major John Wesley Powell, who was appointed Smithsonian Director, a strict pro-evolutionist. And finally, the 1920s discovery on Catalina Island, a megalithic burial complex with 6,000 years of continuous burials involving over 4,000 giant skeletons, including a succession of kings and queens, some more than 9 feet tall, 
the evidence for which he claims, and with good reason, is hidden in the restricted access evidence rooms at the Smithsonian. The Antiki Theorem Mechanism, without a doubt one of the world's most compelling artifacts. Amazingly, it is still within the public domain, one of the rare gems which provides proof of a lost history here on Earth. A history filled with the rise of countless civilizations, and with them, their fruitful development in a vast array of once advanced and now lost technologies. It was clearly valuable cargo at the time of its sinking. Subsequently transferred to the National Museum of Archaeology in Athens, the mechanism was merely a lump of corroded bronze and wood at the time, and went unnoticed for over two years. However, on May 17, 1902, archaeologist Valerio Stace found that one of the pieces had a gear wheel embedded in it. He initially believed it was an astronomical clock. However, now, most scholars reluctantly perceive the device to be prochronistic, too complex to have been constructed during the same period as the other pieces that had been discovered, yet also of clear antiquity. It is simply unexplainable within the rigid boundaries of academically held paradigm. After exhaustive reconstruction efforts since, it has been confirmed to have once been an ancient analog computer, an orrery, used to predict astronomical positions and an extremely long-term complex calendar for astrological purposes. Just how did an ancient Greek cargo ship end up with such a complex and clearly advanced piece of equipment on board? Was this mechanism at the time of the Greeks an ancient, retrieved, intact artifact? That even during their time in history was an artifact of great antiquity, originally owned by a long-lost civilization? Or, judging by the astronomical connections, was this mechanism once not of this world? It would seem, amazingly, that the latter possibility now has a more compelling detail, which has only recently come to light. Over the past few years, it seems, even more fascinating secrets surrounding this once amazing mechanism have slowly been revealed. Mysterious inscriptions found upon the face of the object were once indecipherable, but not anymore. Modern technology has allowed us to reveal the seemingly impossible and has shown that these mysterious writings actually appear to form part of an elaborate instruction manual used to unlock its true potential. However, what is astonishing regarding these inscriptions is the fact that they were indeed written in ancient Greek, and with many modern fields of study unable to accept the premise that ancient Greek was capable of such craftsmanship, or indeed possessed such technology, you have to ask. Was this mechanism a gift from the gods? <laughs>